And now we will hear, tis the gift to be simple. By Ken Miedema. Tis the gift to be simple. Tis the gift to be free. And so let us begin simply so that we may all be free. I invite you now to close your eyes, take a long, slow, deep breath out. Let go of all that you need to let go of from this week. And now take a long, slow, refreshing, deep breath in and hold it. And now let it go. And continuing in that pattern of deep breathing, deep, slow breathing, let us hold the silence together. Let us let go into the silence together. Let us drop down into this sanctuary within us, this place of peace, of stillness of being, of presence, and hold the silence together for a minute. And you may close your eyes. Now you may open your eyes and continue to hold the silence. This gift of being simple and free, as simple and as free as Jesus riding on a donkey, cheered on by the poorest, the meekest, the lowliest, on the road to Jerusalem, to remember together the story of the ancestors, the story of freedom, of liberation, 
the story of the Passover. And so today, here we are, picture it, together in the crowd, awaiting the one who will liberate us now. Hear these words from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the roads. And the crowds that went ahead of them and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heavens. And when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and they asked, who is this? And the crowds answered, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. And so now everyone, wave your palms, lift up your palm branches or flags or flowers or banners or signs of hope. Here's mine. My palm branch. Can you see each other? And so now I invite you to think of the parades of our times and the heroes of our times, especially in this pandemic. The word Hosanna means thank you and please save us. I think about the stories from Spain and Wuhan and all over the world now, cheering on the healthcare workers every evening, scientists for their breakthroughs, political leaders for their courage, agencies seeking critical supplies, medical workers that are called out of retirement because it's all hands on deck. I think of the gratitude for the country of Taiwan who just donated two million masks to our country. I think of the delivery people stocking groceries. And so I invite you to take a moment to consider all that you are grateful for, all of the parades of our times, all of the heroes of our times. Lift up your gratitudes for all of the courageous leaders who are risking their lives and giving them the, of themselves to save all of the people, especially the poor. And Tom will just now unmute us to give us a chance. Who are you grateful to? Who are the heroes of our times? <clears throat> I want to lift up the uh, people who are working in grocery stores, um, yes. people who are doing deliveries of food door to door, who are yeah. minimum wage workers and really low yes. wage workers. And it turns out that when we talk about who is essential, a lot of times it is poor working class people who are Absolutely. really the only That's reason right. we're all alive. We stand Thank on their shoulders. So, Thank so you. much thanks to them. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Others. I want to lift up Mayor Cuomo, Andrew Cuomo, who has shown yes. himself to be a mm -hmm. better leader than our yes. so called leader. Mm -hmm. Yes. He's done a great yes. job of keeping us all informed. 
Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Others. I would like to say thank you to all the healthcare professionals out there who are giving it their all in this crisis, in particular for the care team, uh, for my brother-in-law's father-in-law, Tim, in East Bay. Thank you. <coughs> I'd like to, uh, I don't know if anybody could hear me. We can, yeah, hear, we can hear you. Can hear you. Okay. Yeah. I'd like to say thanks actually to um, all of those who are compliant. Uh, and yeah. just staying at home and for the <clears throat> sake of protecting the more vulnerable populations. I mean, it takes a lot of discipline to change a lifestyle like this and be um, compliant. And so I appreciate all the parents who are staying at home, schooling their kids and trying to juggle work. I mean, I can't imagine the amount, how hard it is to be homeschooling and you know staying home all of a sudden instead of going to work uh, mm -hmm. at the office and just you know do it trying to do everything now yes thank you thank you and I think thank you to all of the teachers who are working so hard to give children an education online and yeah. through the technology issues and having to change every lesson plan and everything yes and I give thanks for the daycare workers um, who are taking care of children of essential workers at this time. Um, I think the forgotten group of the tech workers, the tech workers that are um, you know, helping all these non-tech people who are not in the field yes. be able to um, do all these tasks. Yes. I think we forget to thank them, but they're yes. pretty hard. Yes. I'd like, hi everybody, I'd like to thank neighbors and people in neighborhoods for yes. being good neighbors, the whole principle of being. Yes. Neighbors. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. I have a neighbor in particular, Sarah Grafman, and a bunch of us have been sharing food and keeping in touch, but Sarah is an emergency, I'm sorry, she's an ER nurse at Highland Hospital that is going, that is being very impacted. And the last I heard, she was going to be in charge of the tents out in front of Highland. Wow. Her son, she is creating a movement to have people, adults and children, draw something on an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper and she's going to have them laminated and, pu and put into the hospital rooms uh, for the patient. So I put out a call for this on Facebook and we have some local very famous artists who are actually submitting a couple of things to me. But I invite all of you to draw a stick man, doesn't matter. I'd love to see it, thank you. Thank you. There's so much gratitude. Oh, yes, go ahead. I'd like to give thanks for um, the people that are working in homeless shelters. Yeah. Yes. I can't even imagine what they're going through right now. No. People are yes. having to shelter in place. How are they dealing with uh, social distancing? It doesn't uh, seem like what it... Yeah, how... how and, and the families at Matilda Cleveland that are... Um, on on edge, homeless people are dealing with trauma as it is, and now they're all <coughs> home in their own homes with their children. Yes. Behind, just, it's know, a Zoom, but it's not what I was expecting. Zoom is live. Thank you, everyone, for sharing. So, so now we're going to um, we're going to mute you all. There's so much more to share, and we'll have a chance to we'll have a chance to share more after um, after the service. Um, but now let us join, join our our hearts together. We'll have a chance to share more after the service. Let us hear another song of freedom and liberation, um, a song of freedom from South Africa that's called Siahamba, We Are Marching in the Light of God. And now Benjamin will sing that for us. Mm -hmm. 
And while you are uh, muted, I highly encourage you to sing along because the words are very easy. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light of God. marching and singing songs of gratitude, we will now hear a song of gratitude, according to the tradition, was written and sung by the young King David 3,000 years ago after weathering the great battles and after unifying the kingdom, the great king. Hear the song the psalm that will be sung by Gabrielle, Psalm 118. Tom, can you turn Ken's mic on? It's Gabrielle. Yeah, that's me. Okay. Ken's playing keyboard, but his mic's off. <laughs> oh, okay. <Yeah. laughs> okay. But actually, it doesn't matter. It's okay. <laughs> steadfast love endures forever. Let all Israel say, God steadfast love endures forever. God is my strength and my might. God has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The strong hand of God does valiantly. The mighty hand of God is exalted. The strong hand of God does valiantly. I shall Rejected have become the chief corner. 
has done. This is God's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. <laughs> Amen. Ah. <laughs> and so now let us lift up our palms, our hands, outstretch them to one another and join together in that beautiful prayer that Jesus taught us. Our creator who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. And so speaking of daily bread, you remember the story of the people following Moses in the wilderness and they were so hungry. How long, oh Lord? And miraculously, manna came from heaven, their daily bread. And food is really a miracle when we think about it. Food comes to us like manna from heaven, from the earth, from nature itself. And so if you have some, an item of food or drink in front of you, just lift it up. And I have here today an apple and an orange, both of which the genesis is a seed that falls into the ground and dies and it's nourished by the sun and the water and the rich soil and it grows and it becomes a tree and it bears these fruit, this gift that nourishes us like the daily bread. And here we are today worshiping in our homes, just like the early followers of this way of love that was so embodied in Jesus. And they shared together these meals that they called, the Greek word is called agape. Agape, which means the unconditional love for another without expecting anything in return. Agape meals is what they shared. And so if you have an item of food in front of you, or if you want to run into the kitchen and get it, we just let us lift them up and think of the miracle of the creative energy of God pervasive in nature that gives us our shelter, our food, our drink, our air, our water, our loved ones that gives us everything. And I want you to take a moment to consider in silence what it is that you are most grateful to God for. And also consider something that Jesus did or said that touches you deeply. And in a moment, I'm going to ask Tom to unmute us and a few of us can share some of those gratitudes. <laughs> What are you most grateful to God for? Anyone? This community for one. Mm -hmm. My I'm grateful for trees and flowers and food and children and clean air and water. My health. Health. Mm -hmm. Yes. Health. Yes. Health. 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 Resilience. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I'm what's... grateful for yeah. I'm grateful for the strength that comes to us from our ancestors that uh, yeah. many of us have have ancestors that were farmers and who yeah. every piece of food um, yes. 
meant so much to them and they had that relationship with the food and yes. with the earth and their strength and their gratitude is mm -hmm. the roots of all of that is within us and i'm grateful for that mm -hmm. for the ancestors are the farmers the connection with the earth thank you i'm grateful for the health care workers the health care workers yes with their lives uh, in harm's way every day to and save other people. That's right. Yes. And yes. Thanks, Olivia. Yes. Again. I'm and very grateful if I could just get this thing to work. <laughs> <laughs> no <That's right>. <laughs> you, Grateful for technology and people That's who right. teach us how to use it. Rod, we're grateful for you. <laughs> yeah. What about Jesus? What is, I'd love to hear something that jesus did or said that touched you deeply that touches you deeply you know for me it's jesus revealed who really was blind and who really could see and he loved and he respected children and women and people of different races and religions including and especially those who were considered outsiders and i love that he challenged religious hypocrisy and he lived with courage and the willingness to risk his own life for the greater good. How about you? What in particular about Jesus touches you? One, one of my uh, favorite quotes is, uh, he who is without sin cast the first stone. Yes. I wish some of our politicians would. <laughs> yes. <do that. laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yes. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Yeah. A lot of humility. We're all, we're all in it. We're, we're all a mess. We're all sinners. What else? I also, I appreciate God's forgiveness. Actually, forgiveness. I didn't know how to forgive in my life um, yes. and it, until I learned. So the spirit of forgiveness is priceless, yeah. valuable. Amen. Yeah, because we don't know what we're doing. Amen. Yeah. yeah. I'm grateful that Jesus became man and that he laid his life down for for my sins and my salvation. Yes, thank you, Cheryl, yes, yes. One more. I am grateful that God gives us today and what we need for today. Today, yes. Thank you, God, you know what we need today. Amen, thank you. Amen. So let us bow our heads in prayer. Please. Gracious God, we are grateful to you for everything, for our loved ones, for nature, for health. We are grateful for the... Tom, you muted Lori. Lori's muted, but nobody else is. <laughs> okay. We are grateful for Jesus, for showing us courageous love spirit of the living god fill us with your courageous love with your sense of peace with your hunger for justice now especially now during this time of the pandemic during this time of trial give us the courage to live with love give us the courage to stay with you through it all and so um, we transition now to the passion. And so children under the age of 10, I'm going to invite you to go and play if you're on. Um, you can join us at 1130 for our children's message and the link is on our Skyline website page. If the host could post it, that would be great. Um, and so now let us listen to the beautiful music of Ken Miedema singing, Stay With Me. Sing a different song. Don't be afraid, no matter what may come. Stay with me through the darkness and the gloom. Stay with me, watch and pray. The night is long. We will face the 
principalities and powers. Death will come in the coming hour. Do not fear, death will not last long. In only three days, you will sing a different song. Stay with me. Watch and pray, the night is long. Stay with me, watch and pray, the night is And so we continue with Matthew's Gospel, who more than any of the other Gospel writers sees Jesus as the fulfillment of the Hebrew Scriptures, the promised Messiah. And so now we enter the night, the time of the betrayal, the Passover meal, and the Garden of Gethsemane. We will now hear our first reading from Matthew 26, 14 through 16. One of the 12 disciples, the one named Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and asked them, what will you pay me if I turn him over to you? So they counted out 30 pieces of silver and gave them to him. And so from then on, Judas watched for an opportunity to hand him over. Judas kisses me, says words of friendship now, while to the power of silver in deference he'll bow. Stay with me, watch and pray, the night is long. Our second reading continues with Matthew chapter 26, verses 17 through 29, Jane Miedema. On the first day of the Jewish festival of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, where do you want us to observe the Passover feast? He gave them some instructions. Go into the city to find a man I know there and tell him, the teacher says that the time that God has arranged is almost here. Let's celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples followed his instructions and prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus was at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. These words upset them, and they began to say to him one after another, Surely you don't mean me, sir. Jesus answered, The very person who's sharing my dish will betray me. Remember what has been written about the Son of Man and how he will end? The words say, Woe to the person who betrays the Son of Man. It would have been better for him if he had never been born. Then Judas, the one who really was going to betray him, said, Surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. And Jesus answered, 
The very words are coming from your own mouth. As they continued the meal, Jesus took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and passed it to his disciples, saying, take it and eat it. This is my body. Then he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he said, drink from it, every one of you. This is a sign of a new covenant that I'm making with you. A covenant sealed with my blood, offering forgiveness of sins to everyone who seeks it. I tell you that I'm not going to drink this wine again until the day when I drink it with you in my Father's kingdom. Stay with me, watch and pray, for the night is long. And we remember that night, and we remember how Jesus celebrated the Passover with his beloved friends, even under the shadow of that terrifying time of the empire, that terrifyingly deadly militarism the violence of extreme wealth inequality and enslavement and dehumanizing poverty and sheer indifference to it all. And so there with his loved ones in that room, they remembered the story of their ancestors. They remembered the Passover and the liberation of those enslaved by Pharaoh's empire and they thought of Caesar's empire and their hearts burned with passion for that time spoke to this time here and now for them. And there was hope once more for that freedom and that perhaps that Jesus was the promised king, the promised leader, the new Messiah who would bring forth that kingdom but now they were about to discover what that really meant. As Jesus spoke the strangest words, words that had never before been spoken at a Passover meal, he said, take and eat for this bread is my body broken open for you. My body, they thought, what could that mean? And then he said, take and drink. For this is the new covenant 
in my blood poured out for you, poured out for all of you, for the forgiveness of sins. And they pondered those words in their hearts. We will not drink from the fruit of the vine until we drink it together in that new kingdom. Where and when is this new kingdom? Can it be here and now among us? Can it begin within us? And so, my friends, we come together to remember and embody this mystery, take it into our hearts and into our lives, make these words that we hear become flesh within us, within our bodies, within our blood, that we in turn may be poured out and broken open with love for this hungry world. And that through that agape love, hope and justice and the new life and the kingdom may come. And so take it in and breathe in that love. And imagine us, each one of us on our knees as we break bread together, as Gabrielle will sing. Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, my God have mercy. Let us drink wine together on our knees. Let us drink wine together on our knees. When I fall, on me. Let us praise God together on our knees. Let us praise God together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the And now we continue in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26, verses 30 through 35. Teresa. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus told them, this very night you will all fall away on account of me, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you to the Sea of Galilee. Peter replied, even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. Truly I tell you, Jesus answered, this very night before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. But Peter declared, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. Be 
Peter, my friend, you've always been so brave. You told me not to come here. My life you sought to save. And now you're afraid that if you tell the truth, you might not live. You are my beloved. Even this I shall forgive. Just stay with me. Watch and pray. The night is long. Matthew thirty five to forty six. Thirty six. So then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away, unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping, because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come, and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go, here comes my betrayal. Oh, is that my betrayer? Please don't you doze while I'm weeping. I need you awake, don't be sleeping. I'll not be with you very, very long. Everything will change come tomorrow's dawn. Stay with me, watch and pray, and I did And so we stay and pray in this not long night that we're living in now. And let us bring to mind together our prayers for this world, for our country, for our city, for our family and friends. And I invite you to share your prayers by typing them into the chat menu or by raising your hand. And I'll do my best to summarize these. And we will also have extended time after the service today for more extended time of sharing. We continue to pray for this world, 
especially the poor, the unhoused, the undocumented, those in prisons, refugees, those living barely existing in war-torn countries. We, pay, we pray for the poorest people on this planet, people of color in India, the continent of Africa, all those infected with COVID-19, all those facing quarantine. We continue to pray for medical professionals and caregivers and researchers. We pray for wise and compassionate leaders throughout the world, for all of us adjusting to this new reality, for business owners and families under enormous financial stress, the grocery store workers, the delivery workers, those who are uninsured. We pray for all those who are sick and in grief, all those who are listed in our tree of life. Are there other prayers? There's no one in the chat. We could unmute briefly if there are other prayers. Mm -hmm. I continue to lift up prayers for the family of Will Ang, mm -hmm. um, who've lost not only their youngest brother, but also their father within the course of two months. Mm. Um, I'd like to lift up a prayer for uh, my dear friend, Martin Kennedy, a high school friend of mine who has COVID-19 back in New Jersey. He is very sick, but he has not needed to be hospitalized and will probably be okay. Um, but for him and his wife, who's a healthcare worker and is dealing with the guilt of being the one who transmitted it to him. Yeah. Um, so for Martin Kennedy and his wife. I'd like to lift up a prayer for all of us or all people that live in loneliness and in despair. Thank you. That this time of shelter like in place is not a time of separation, but a time of deepening connections. Thank you. Go ahead. I'd like to lift up prayers for the families keeping vigil from afar, uh, for their loved ones who are dying, uh, who may be connected to their loved one via FaceTime or simply through prayer uh, in this time when families are unable to come to the hospital. Mm. That was just so hard. Mm. I'd like to lift up a prayer for all the researchers and, and medical personnel who are desperately looking for it treatments and um, vaccines. Um, I, I pray every day that they will have some sort of breakthrough and that somehow we can bring um, a light of hope in this time. That's right. I look at prayers for my brother-in-law whose mother just died and so many of us, including me, were not able to fly out to what was a very small graveside service, remembering her. And for all the people who will be facing these situations in the months ahead. I have uh, prayers for all the people who um, ordinarily would be having gatherings like weddings. I'm imagining that must be awfully tough for people to be getting married and not be able to invite it, people to come. Yeah other graduation ceremonies, all kinds of things that are needing to be. Yes, yes. Yes, yeah. my niece posted um, last week, She, my great niece is a senior in high school and she's just finding it very difficult because graduation in those last few weeks with your friends who are gonna be scattering at the end of the year and the senior prom and all the things that these kids yeah. have been looking forward to for years. And, you know, I can say to myself, having been many, many years separated from that, that she will remember 
this time as a special time in a very different way. Mm -hmm. But I don't think she's able to see that right now. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Like to look at um, a prayer for my family and friends back east. Um, it is it is a really, really difficult uh, situation in New York and New Jersey right now. Yes. Um, for all of the healthcare workers and, you know, people that I know, relatives that are back there. Um, and particularly for my brother, who is actually um, uh, has lung disease. So he's very, very high risk. Yes. Um, and has been Can you hear me? It's very scary, you know, to yeah. think that. Um, Am I on? This is going to go on for quite some time. Yes. Thank you. Am I on? No. Yes. Yeah. We can hear you. You can see me. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Can you both? Both. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, I not the praying kind, but if anybody else would uh, like to, I'm uh, perfectly content with raising a prayer about Vivian's cancer treatment. Yes. I don't know what to do at this point. And she hasn't heard from her oncologist. Yes. So and I'm very hesitant about going back and forth like I've been doing, you know. Yeah. It's complicating the situation to put it the mildly. Mm. Mm. That's right. He's been taking her to the hospital for our, our prayers with with Vivian, with Rod, with so many people who are facing these difficult decisions about treatments and hospitals making very difficult decisions about triage. Um, and so many of us who have loved ones in dangerous places like New York City, right here in the Bay Area, Seattle, um, loved ones who are at risk, um, and gratitude for everyone for the precautions that we're taking. Let us lift up all of these prayers. Gracious God, you who are the healer, the forgiver, the transformer, the source of our lives, we ask that you would be with all these people in your healing ways. All those named and all those known to you in our hearts, breathe your deep peace into them and into us and make us whole. We ask this in your many names and through Jesus. Amen. And so now would be the time when we would um, receive today's offering. Um, and in addition to our regular offering, um, we continue to support the One Great Hour of Sharing effort, which is a collective effort to support disaster relief, which the UCC takes part in. And this year in particular, uh, support efforts are going for COVID-19 and especially for refugees. Um, you can find more information in our website if you would like to give. And so let us hear this beautiful sung response, Give Me a Clean Heart from Benjamin. Give me it's 11 o'clock.
Amen. Gracious God, give us all clean hearts, hearts broken open with compassion, humility, kindness, justice for all. May these gifts be used to support those in greatest need. Amen. And so before our sung benediction by Ken, I want to invite you all after the benediction to stay on um, for some announcements and time of sharing and connecting. And once again, I want to extend my deepest thanks and gratitude for our guest musicians, um, Ken and Benjamin, our um, talented Gabrielle, and for each one of you for joining us. So Ken. Go, my friends, and God defend you all through the night. May she peace and courage send you all through the night. May she never stand beside you in her loving kindness hide you through the treacherous darkness guide you all through the night. Stay with me, watch and pray, the night is long. Stay with me, watch and pray, the night is long. Amen.